Hello, my name is Tony Baca, Senior Vice President of Safety at Berglund Construction Company. And this week's safety talk and handout are on electrical safety. We all know that falls in construction are the number one killer in the construction industry, but it's followed closely by caught between pinch by exposures and then electricity comes into play as number four. And the standards in subpart K of the OSHA regulations and in our training states that we should be looking at our tools prior to each use, whether it's a, a sander, a drill, a grinder, whatever we're using, and even a simple extension cord. Now, as you know, we inspect all of these prior to each use. And we're looking to make sure that our extension cords have the ground prong in place so that we don't become ground, right, with electricity. And that we look at the cords in their entirety. And then once we send them back in, damaged or not, remember our red tag policy. But getting back to electricity, when we're working in boom lifts or we're working with cranes, there's a lot of things going on. The standard actually calls for us to be 10 feet away from overhead power lines. But if we're using a crane, we need to be 20 feet away from those power lines, depending on whether or not they're more or less than 50 kV. So a lot of times we have to call the utility company to find out what that transformer is. If it's over 300 in kV, then we need to be more than 10 feet away and or 20 feet away with a crane. But on a smaller scale from overhead power lines, we do have our common everyday tools and we have our common everyday extension cords. And as I receive our site safety inspections from our superintendents each week, there's at least a few that have in there bad electrical assembly on cords and tools and that they've been taken out of service. We're 65% water and electricity seeks the path of least resistance. If we're going to be complacent and we're going to use damage extension cords and damage tools, it's only a matter of time before we get zapped. So let's just say I'm working on a supported or suspended scaffold system, which is made of metal, or I'm going up an extension ladder and I take a shock. That may make me flinch. And now not only did I take a shock, which can affect my human body and nervous system, but I'm also falling. So there's a compounding effect. There is a portion of uh, this text that reads, the effect on the body. Even a small shock can kill you. If it passes through your heart and lungs, if the current does not pass through vital organs or nerve centers, severe injuries such as deep internal burns can still occur. Other effects include involuntary muscular reactions, which may cause falls, resulting in bruises, bone fractures, and death. Let's take a look every day at our cords and tools. I know we're getting complacent. We're in peak season here in the latter part of August. We have a lot going on. We have 250 men working. There's a lot of tools in the gang boxes. When the jobs demobilize, let's make sure we tell the shop in this red ticket here what's wrong with it, if anything at all. But, you know, let's do our due diligence. Let's take care of number one. Let's be our brother's keeper and let's inspect our electrical assemblies. Once again, if you see a live open panel or an open electrical panel in a, in a closet of sorts, let's get a hold of the electrician, make sure that it's not live. Let's get the covers on those panels so that we have no exposure to fellow tradespeople working in that vicinity. So once again, let's talk a little bit about electrical safety. This week, let's talk with our comrades. Remember, it likes to go into the bone and work its way back out with severe burns and potentially um, heart defibrillation. 
and then of course death. So let's take electricity safely. Think about it safely. Let's have a safe day. Let's have a safe week. Thank you.